Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Kira the Doll back for yet another Baddie Seas review. Today's gonna be episode 14. So let's get straight into it. I will start off by saying this season is so lame and corny. It's just like I need to find my next topic to talk about. So this episode starts off with E.T. and Biggie's altercation. I'm so proud of Biggie for standing on business. This altercation was obviously orchestrated by Natalie, but I just feel as though Biggie had enough, you know, and she snapped on E.T. and jabbed her like her mama should have. So Biggie still insists that she didn't tell anybody to hit E.T. and she don't know who E.T. is referring to. And nobody really says or does anything to help Biggie. And I feel like that would have brought back the true Bad Girls Club style. But right now what they're doing is they're showing illusions of Hollywood and the popularity effect. Because Biggie just doesn't have the status. E.T.'s on Natalie's side and Natalie has the status. So like... You know, Biggie is the enemy. As far as E.T., it just shows how easily naive and, like, manipulated she is. It honestly shows that she's a little slow because if if that's all it takes is somebody to tell you X, Y, Z and for you to trigger and snap, like, so now you're a puppet on the string. Then Rolly gonna have the nerve to throw Biggie wig in the woods. And I'm just like... So nobody can't tell me that E.T. didn't fight Biggie for you because how do y'all both coincidentally keep having beef with the same people and T at that? And now you and T having a conversation. I feel like T carried that convo. You can tell she had to put on her mama's shoes and breastfeed Roly for that scene because Roly can't act. You know, deep down, you can tell deep down she knew she was dead wrong for what she was doing and i feel like t can act really good you can tell that she just carried that conversation for the sake of a scene is it just me or do et face look swollen like i don't know what the hell was going on with her but she literally looked like somebody mama and they sunday cleaning attire this whole night then roly goes to taunt um biggie again and telling her that she has her eviction notice and she has to get out and Biggie says she's not going nowhere. And then Biggie goes to have a pep talk with Smiley and like, don't let them run you out this house. We not going like that. Then E.T. feels pretty accomplished. You could tell by the smile on her face. So then we have Suki. She takes the initiative to go talk to Smiley and Biggie, which I highly respect. I guess she can sense the fakeness in the air and wants to make it, a, you know, a fair playing ground. You know, it's not fair that the whole cast is ganging up on two people. Not only that, but I feel like she's starting to get a sense of who's really the problem because E.T. and Roly keep fighting everybody. She doesn't say it, but I feel like that could possibly be why her and Roly get into it into Jamaica because, you know, she's an observer. She comes in and she's watching what's going on and you guys are bullies and y'all just trying to cover it up for, you know, something that is not and try to make it seem like y'all not bullying. But why do Roly keep wearing clothes that's too small for her, y'all? So now the girls is getting ready to go out. They got a little event to go to. And they not thinking of Biggie got a hat on and stuff. They not thinking of why she's dressed down. But this is literally right after E.T. just messed with her stuff, just was taunting her. This is that same night. So I don't know why the girls didn't think what was about to happen was about to happen. Y'all, this is my favorite part. This is about to be the thumbnail. Because, like, E.T. face, it was her face for me. But she is fast. That girl is fast. That girl fast. Because she ain't even know where the hit was coming from. But she was on it. She was on it. She she got her close. Like, she was close. But, you know, you was a little too slow. But you fast. Because for, for somebody to not see it coming, you reacted quickly. But... You did look like you seen the goddamn boogeyman. And you thought, he got your ass. Yo, like, it's just so funny to me. She was, wasn't was paying attention. She must have heard somebody whisper here. Come here. Even Roly face. Like, yo, this is funny as hell. <laughs> and then all the baddies behind them was ready to square up. This was just funny. I'm sorry. That was funny. So then Biggie. They're like, oh, that was Biggie, that was Biggie. And you see Biggie in the camera like this was, I'm trying to tell you, this, this was hilarious because 
what made it so funny to me is that E.T. know damn well she just fucked with Biggie stuff. So why wouldn't you expect this to happen? Like, what was you thinking was going to happen? You thought that Biggie was about to come in. You know, you thought everything was about to be sweet, huh? You thought your ass was untouchable, huh? She done touched you, touched you back. What you going to do? The girls ain't even make it inside the club, y'all. Why they kicked them the fuck out? They got kicked out the outside of the club. They got kicked off they land, they property. <laughs> Y'all is hooligans. Y'all don't know how to fuck the act. So then we got Biggie and Smiley. I love this duo, y'all. They have the personality. Like, this is the personality that most of the other girls should have. But hold on, y'all. What's going on with Smiley's stomach, though? But neither here nor there. They kind of join forces and become closer in my eyes. I feel like they have one of the most genuine friendships here. And I, I live for it. I do. Because, you know, nobody want to see y'all keep fighting for no damn reason. We want to see some true, genuine connections. We want to see some people really, you know, come together. And this this connection works so perfectly because they're both being picked on. So, you know, they had some something in common. Next, we have Scotty, Rowley, and Natalie. They basically talking about this pool party that Natalie is planning. I can admit that the activities are more interesting this season than before. Then Mariah joins. And so then back at the other house, these girls are feeling tea in on everything because she's been missing. And basically, they're telling her about how Biggie snuck E.T. at the... um premiere or whatever and it's just kind of funny because t doesn't say it but it's like now they found their new victim you know and then basically they asked smiley about her situation with mariah and she just like i'm tired of fighting her and i feel her because y'all literally have been fighting since the first episode like bro give it the fuck up like if anybody needed a forgiveness day it should have been mariah and fucking smiley y'all been fighting since the first episode like by this point we know that who's gonna win mariah please give it up but so now they're on their way to the pool party and you know the girls still aren't paying biggie any mind in her bonnet i'm glad she came prepared but basically you see natalie's girls they're having fun i like this part However, I wish there was more personality and less beauty. Like, where's the substance? These girls are boring. Like, Scotty is not really too interesting. A lot of these girls are not too interesting. DJ Sky, like, they're all just eye candy. But where's the substance? Like, where is the actual... You know, Krishan was so funny. That's why she was the star. These girls are just coming back because Zeus is over there having the fuck fest. But anyways... It definitely started to give scripted, especially as the way they started to make a commotion and a ruckus as the other girls arrived. So T gives the other girls a warm welcome, a very warm welcome. And she like, all right, y'all, let's go. Let's turn up. Let's get it cracking. And I didn't even pay no mind to the fact that I did not see E.T. until this moment. She was crouched behind a bush and... This is the part where I felt like it just seemed scripted because E.T., we know you're not bright enough to hide behind, behind a bush. Like, that's something more elementary school style. We would have thought of that back then. But you at this grown age is not thinking of that. Y'all obviously orchestrated this and it's scripted. They tried, these girls, Natalie and them was trying to make a ruckus, make it seem like, you know, cause a distraction so that when the girls came, they weren't looking at E.T. hiding. Like, this was obviously the fuck scripted, y'all. Like, y'all can't tell me nothing else. Then she gonna say some shush. Then it's just like, E.T. is supposed to be this big fighter, but Biggie, big body Biggie, still handled you. Like, if y'all wasn't tumbling on each other, I think Biggie might have fucked you up. I really think Biggie would have tore her ass up because E.T., was sloppy she's fighting sloppy this whole season like these fights are not you know they're not fights that we would be expecting from somebody like et especially she don't fought croissant you know so we're expecting you to come and be knocking these bitches out one hit or quitters but you up here getting tossed the fuck around while your friends is you know think this shit is a game the reason why I feel like Biggie would have tore her up is because Biggie is, like, an empath. Like, she's somebody who is passionate. Like, 
she don't fight. You know, she pick and choose her fights. So for the fact that she was re she's ready to fight E.T., like she's mad that E.T. touched her stuff. And she said, you can't afford that stuff, E.T. Put it down. You can't afford that. I feel like that really got to Biggie and she just was ready to fight from this moment on. So I feel that's why I feel as though Biggie would have won because when you fighting with passion, you know, you're angry, you're fighting with emotion, like that's a serious fight. And I think Biggie would have really tore her ass up because she's mad. You know, Biggie don't really get mad like that. And them type of people, you got to be careful with. What really pissed me off about this fight is how they dragged it out to the next episode. We didn't even get to see the whole fight. So that's one thing I really don't like about this season is just how they drag out all of these fights and stretch it out throughout the episodes, then talk about the fight. It's just like... It's it's getting it's dragging. Y'all are dragging everything just to get content, just to get twenty episodes, and the shit wasn't even worthy of twenty episodes to begin with. Now we're on the next episode, and basically they out at the club, and they said that DJ Sky was acting a mess. Y'all look at DJ Sky. She done gave them some good ass content. I know that's the fuck right, DJ Sky, DJ. But then. The baddies in New York City or whatever in Times Square for some odd reason. I don't know what's going on. They look like the damn Jabberwockies. Then we got um, these girls at another dinner, like last season. And this is like the um, the last supper or whatever. And I love that Suki finally starts speaking up. She addresses Mariah. I guess because she tired of her fighting Smiley. And E.T. addresses, I assume, Biggie and... Also, Anna and Smiley supposedly get into it, but I don't know about this fight. Like, Natalie's screaming, oh, they're fighting, get them, they're fighting, but they looked it pretty playful, so I don't know if they really going to fight or not, but we'll see. But as far as this season and this episode, I enjoyed that they're finally finding more activities for them to do. But a lot of the cast members are boring and it's like they're just place fillers. A lot of them have no true personalities or they're just too scared to cross certain people. So then they're all ganging up on certain cast members. If y'all really pay attention, it's kind of funny that certain people are getting bullied. Then you got the other people who nobody even looked in their direction in the wrong way, you know? So it's just like... Very odd, y'all. But this is just how the world is becoming. You know, nobody... People are less quick to stand up for people getting bullied. You know, a lot of people will just turn their blind eye when somebody's getting bullied or messed with just for the sake of themselves and the sake of climbing up the ladder them damn selves. But neither here nor there i appreciate every last one of you guys for watching i will be back next week let me know what other topics you guys would like to hear about because this is getting a little dragged out i'm just waiting for the reunion at this point but see you guys next week bye